it's Biggs, and welcome to my hall. What do I mean? Well, this is my Genos unboxing. I know you've probably seen a lot of Genos unboxing videos around the uh, good old internet, and I hope there'll be many, many more, as many, many more people get their chance to get their own Genos. So what makes this one different? Well, I've been waiting a long time for this, and as you notice, it looks like there's a lot more here than meets the eye than just a Genos and something to sit it on. And you're absolutely right. There's a lot of extra goodies here that will make up what I would probably call the beginnings of my dream setup. So let's get right into it. The thing is, where to start? Should I start small and work my way up to the big daddy? Or should we get right to the dessert and start with the keyboard? Yep, that's what we're doing. We're gonna go right for the biggie and then we'll work our way down from there. Okay, let's go. Here we are, the big mama. I've been waiting a long time for this. In fact, it's been something like seven years or more. I first saw the Tyros when it was at the end of Tyros 2 and Tyros 3 was being released. And I thought it was going to be hard for it to get much better than that. And then the 4 came out. And then the 5 came out. And the 76 keys. I tell you, I almost jumped on the 5. But situations in life kept me from doing so. And I thought, well, maybe when the 6 comes out. And then I started to see the glimmers and the leaks about the Genos. And I couldn't believe it. I thought somehow I need to at least get my hands on this to play it a lot. It is uh, like the engineers had my wish list for this kind of keyboard in their head and they made it for me. With a few exceptions, of course, nothing's perfect. But man, I think think this one is dang close. Oh boy. Here we go. Let's see if we can make enough space to bend this one back. If you haven't looked up online to see the performances and demos of Martin Harris from Yamaha, who is one of the teams that did a lot of the design for this keyboard and many other Tyros. Please do that, you'll totally enjoy yourself. We have the power cord, internal power supply, no wall wart. I appreciate that. What do we have here? Ah. Either what looks like the music stand bracket or a speaker bracket. I'm going to guess it's the music stand bracket. More than likely. That's one of them. There's the second one. And what else do we have over here? A manual and I find that it's strangely thick I hope that's because it's multiple languages if that's all English am I gonna be able to convince myself to read it probably not until I run into a problem because you know musicians and manuals okay let's get this out of the way Now, what's going to be the easy way here? Maybe there isn't an easy way. Now, I don't want to cut what it's wrapped in, which means I'm going to have to lift it. So let's do that carefully. Oh, 
yeah. Now we're talking. I tell you, I've watched so many videos and demos. I feel like I already know this thing. And there it is. Now, I don't want to expose it to any damage until I have somewhere to put it. So I'm going to wait till I have the stand for it up. And then I'm sure underneath of this is its music rack. But we're going to leave it right here in the box until it's time to lift her out and put her in her proper new home. Okay, on to the next piece. Okay, these are the GNS MS01s, the 2.1 sub and satellite speaker system that Yamaha made especially for the GNOS. And I've heard a lot about these, pros and cons. And I've had a lot of experience with speaker systems like this on other keyboards, and even computers for that matter. And I found it can go either way. They can be surprisingly good or surprisingly poor. I'm going to hope for surprisingly good. I don't expect them to fill a stadium or anything, but when you're sitting right in front of them, they should give you a really nice listening experience while you're playing. In the future, I plan on expanding to a performance PA for this, something like uh, the Bose F1 PA system. Google that and check it out. They uh, sound and perform even better than they look. Okay, we've got the manual. And what do we do with manuals? That's right. This looks like the uh, multi-pin cable probably that goes down to the sub, I'm thinking. We'll find out shortly. This is the right and left leads that go into each of the satellite speakers. These are the mounts, I'm pretty sure, yep. These are the left and right mounts that the speakers sit on, on the back edge of the keyboard. That's the right, that's the left. Actually, I'm sure they're interchangeable. And master power. Again, built-in power supply and no power brick. Love that. Let's take a look at the satellites first. And I'm sure these are two identical pieces. They're not a right or left. Although, Let's open the other one. There's a locking cam on the bottom, and that very well could be directional, even though I don't think it is, but let's find out. Again, if you already have a Genos, I apologize if this is really basic stuff. No, they're absolutely identical as far as I can tell. The cams are in the same place. Let me flip this around. And that's made to sit on the keyboard mount and then lock so that if you're like me and you've got a dog wandering around with a big flipping tail, <laughs> when she smacks one of these, they're not gonna go flying off. So my initial impression is they're smaller than I thought they would be in person, but they're also heavier than I thought they would be, which could bode well for their sound. Again, I'm not expecting this to sound, you know, like, uh, an 8 or 12 inch studio monitor speaker, but I expect it to be enjoyable and great as monitors, uh, even perhaps while I'm using a, an external PA system. So, so far so good. Let's have a look at the sub, which again, same thing. To me, this looks smaller than I expected. but heavy. Mm. 
and it matches, of course. And it, as far as I have been told and I've seen, with uh, the one of the main differences here with this sub, as compared to the old Tyros speaker systems, is that the power switch is on the front right there and not on the back, which was silly. Why did a power button location on the back persist for five generations and it took the sixth generation to get it on the front where it's convenient? Go figure. So we've got what on the front here? The power and the sub volume. And on the back, we've got the main volume. Oh, and the multi-pin cable, that's what goes out to the speakers. And then the AC. So I'm guessing this adjusts the overall volume of the sub and satellite speakers simultaneously, and then the front volume uh, controls the volume of the sub independently, over, uh, and which you could then ring up and down with the volume control uh, when, once you get a balance between them that you like. I'm very fond of turning both of these all the way up. Go figure. Now I have two choices. I could put this like it is, down on the floor, next to the Genos, or I can first give it to my wife, and then half an hour later, it will be covered in stickers. Time will tell. We'll see. All right, on to the next wonderful piece. This is the biggest box I got. It's also the one of the lightest. It's very important. It's an ATA qualified carrying case for the Genos. If I decide I want to go and do a little remote party, jam at a friend's house. Last thing you want to do is get it all scratched up, bunged up, or accidentally hurt. So this is to help stop that from ever happening. And I can tell you, you should never skimp on your cases. And even though I've said that, I skimped on this one a little bit. It's a good case. It's a hard ABS plastic, I believe. Very solid. Yamaha does make really solid case, but it's two to three times the price, and I'm not sure that it's really two to three times the case. Gator makes a good line. And let's see how easy it's going to be to pull this out. I'm going to go over here. Well, that's not easy. Oh, this is actually an upgrade of the case that I thought I was buying. Probably just a newer version. This is really, really solid. We've got a really solid. I would say it would take a lot to crush this. It's very protective. And the Genos. I found, regardless of the specs, to be unexpectedly a little bit heavy. That's why this is nice. Roller skate bearing wheels. So, I'll just be pushing that baby along anywhere I feel like it. Okay, next piece. This next piece was a really important choice for me that I thought a lot about, and that's the stand. Originally, I fully intended on getting the new black Yamaha stand made for the Genos, which is pretty similar, if not identical, to the old Tyro stand. But then I thought about moving it around. It doesn't really break down all that easily, and I might like to go and do some gigs, some house concerts, jam with friends, what have you. And I wanted maximum space in width at the bottom on the floor where I could put any number of pedals and controllers. And it's not much, but sometimes an extra half inch to an inch makes a difference, and that's kind of what you get here. I went with a table stand, and if you've watched any of Peter Bartman's videos with the Genos, at least about half the time at the various dealers he's shown up to, I have seen him use this very stand, and it works really well. I'm also really picky about stability because I can be a pretty heavy player and if a stand flexes underneath me, it's really irritating and potentially damaging to the keyboard if it was to give way or tip, which I've had happen. Hopefully it doesn't come in 
too many pieces. In case you would like to know, this is the K&M 18810 table style keyboard stand, the Omega. And the other cool thing about this stand, besides its stability, is there is a lot of accessories. And I got almost every one. <laughs> so uh, as after I get this set up, I will show you the accessories and how they go on here. It's in very cool stuff. Typical kind of stuff you'd expect, like um, a, a microphone stand. Uh, something I didn't get, but I could get later if I wanted to, which is another tier to add a second keyboard. And especially since Genos has such wonderful computer abilities, this stand lets me mount safely and securely my laptop and fly it right off to the side of the stand. So we'll get into a lot more of that later, and I won't make you suffer through me wrangling and twisting wrenches and busting knuckles and swearing up a storm. Uh, so we'll, we'll put it all together and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, here is the stand all assembled. Uh, I like it very much. It's very, very sturdy. All steel construction. Um, nice wide base on the legs. Uh, wide footprint that is. So it's very stable. You can't tip it over. I mean, you could, but it would take a lot more than any normal activity. They also include these Velcro cable control uh, strips for them. They've got two up here and two on the sides. I don't know exactly where to adjust it to height-wise yet. We will know shortly after we get the keyboard on it. Uh, I'm a little baffled by this area where they give you these bumpers to, I'm guessing, keep the keyboard raised above this carriage bolt. But these bumpers and these, which are rubberized right here, not the same height. So I'm not sure what the point is here. It would seem like this is what you want to be making contact with the keyboard. Um, unless maybe these are here if you have a smaller keyboard. Maybe I'll end up taking those off and letting the Genos just sit here. And while we're at it, is it Genos or Genos? Like Tyros, Genos? I hear it both ways. If you know the definitive answer, and heck, if you're from Yamaha and you've got the definitive answer, put it in the comments, please. So, no accessories on this yet, but this is the basis for everything else. Notice how wide the feet area is under here. We've got lots of goodies coming up for that. And I can't wait to get the keyboard mounted and uh, hearing the first sounds out of it. But first, the rest of the unboxing. Let's go to the next piece. Next to the keyboard itself, this was probably one of the most important decisions when it came to accessories. It's small, it involves no electricity or electronics, but it's where the booty be spending hours and hours and hours behind the keyboard for practice and play. Yes, the bench, and I chose this model, which is the BNC 05 BK2 by Roland. Mainly because of the fact that it's solid. They don't call me bigs for nothing, so I need something that can hold me. And it's adjustable, which is nice because they're not always made the exact height that you like. Um, this may not be the final seat, but it was a good place to start. Uh, and I'll go on a quest if I need to. But I'm hoping it's really going to do the trick. Let's have a look. I'll tell you one thing. This box is really, really heavy. Uh, I'm sure that it's obviously made out of all steel. And it's well packed. And, oh dear, a lot of parts. Okay, so once again, I won't make you sit through the assembly. I will pause, I will put this together, and then we'll be right back. Okay, it's all together. And you can see, hopefully right off the bat, a few of the reasons I chose this. One, solid steel, very, very solid. And my favorite part of this, there's the side knob, 
where you can adjust the height of the bench, very similar to the very high-end grand piano benches that you get when you spend twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on a piano. The only thing I did not expect uh, when I ordered this is it's smaller than it looked, and the padding is not very thick. And at first sitting on it, it seems not very comfortable. So I don't know if I'm going to stay with this bench. I'll probably try getting an extra pad for it. Uh, because other than that, I think overall it should work pretty well. So time will tell. We'll try it as it is and then uh, see if we can hack it, so to speak, and make it even cushier. So that's the bench. Let's look at a few of the smaller accessories which are in our next box. All right, this box should be chock full of the smaller accessories. Let's see what all is in here. I know that it's probably pedals for sure. Ah. So yes, yeah, a MIDI cable. We'll go into what that's for in a little bit. The Yamaha FC5. This is a standard little momentary foot switch. I'm sure you've seen many like it. Basically kind of flat and black. The quarter inch plug on one end. Often on uh, the cheaper keyboards and pianos, this ends up being what you get for a sustain switch. In this case, I'm going to be assigning this to some other function on the keyboard, perhaps one of the articulations, or maybe start and stop for the styles. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we'll see once I get it up and running. We have this big daddy, the Yamaha FC7. Another favorite of Peter Barton's, if you've seen him performing. He loves to use a volume pedal. I'm thinking probably because a lot of his organ training, same as myself. And this is Yamaha's lovely, solid, beefy volume pedal. It's just a workhorse. I've had these before. Love them. Um, the main two things, obviously this will be a volume pedal, uh, but we'll probably also use this for a wah-wah pedal uh, in some cases. And uh, if I haven't tried this yet or don't even know if I can, but I might even try assigning it to pitch bend in some cases. I don't know. We'll see what we're going to do with this later and we'll have some fun. Okay, these are accessories for the keyboard stand. This is a general accessory that helps other accessories work. That's, that's pretty meta. That's an accessory to the accessory. How about that? And this looks like one piece of the um, extension for the microphone stand. Again, I'll unpack these and put them all on the stand and show you them all in action later. The Yamaha FC4A, an actual piano style sustain pedal, one of my favorites. Another nice thing about these is the rubber feet that are so wide 
that keeps this from sliding around. I can't tell you how many gigs I've played where I had my foot chasing the sustain pedal all night and dragging it back towards me and it would creep away and then drag it back again. Uh, really hate that and this helps stop that from happening. thing what do we got ah, this is the rest of the microphone stand another extension pole there's the actual microphone boom can't wait to get playing with that and attaching it to the stand and I will absolutely show you that as soon as I do There's one other accessory hiding around here that kind of belongs in this group. Here it is. This is another stand accessory. And a very cool one, I believe. The dimensions look right anyway. This is going to be very handy for a lot of things. All right. One major component left. Let me go grab it and we'll dive in and finish this up. This is my not so secret, secret sauce component. The Yamaha MFC10 MIDI foot controller. I have seen this maybe two or three times in videos here on YouTube. So it's not real common, although, or at least it's not common amongst video producers, but I believe it's going to be super helpful and fun to use. supply. I have a feeling this might be a wall wart. I guess getting hit with one of them. Oh, it's not terrible. It's not, at least it's not huge. That'll be okay. Well, let's pull this bad boy out of here. manual. This will probably be the closest time I'm going to get to cracking the manual pretty early in the process. So I'm not throwing it away permanently, but we're going to toss it to the side for now. This is the MFC-10, and one of the reasons you can see why I wanted as much space on the floor underneath the keyboard as possible. Uh, another volume pedal, so I could have something dedicated to say wah-wah and still have my volume pedal. Uh, and then there is a function mode, which is indicated right here, that once you get it into the right function mode, the uh, 
Genos and Tyros as well, if you're a Tyros owner, uh, will recognize over a, just a single MIDI cable that you have enabled this function and there is uh, sort of a handshake process where this will tie right into the operating system on your keyboard and then you can map this, um, well, we'll call it a volume pedal, but it could be really anything that you assign to it, and every one of these buttons do something different. Uh, for example, uh, I, I haven't been in, I, I know that it is limited, although there are many, many options, so I could be speaking incorrectly here, but just as an example, maybe I could put articulation one, two, and three right here. Um, maybe I could put uh, style and fill one, two, three, four here. Or, uh, well, you get the idea. Sky's the limit. Anything you would want to be able to do all that you do all the time when you're playing without having to lift either of your hands, you could assign that function more than likely. Although, again, there may be some cases where it's not available. But, boy, look at the flexibility this could give you. Now, the only thing I see here that's really kind of a little strange is, um, and this is my bad because I didn't do any measurement, but it's longer than it looked like in the online catalog. So is there going to be space for it? I sure hope so. Uh, because remember, I want this. I want my Yamaha big volume pedal. I want the piano sustain pedal. And I want the other little square pedal. So is there enough real estate on the floor? I don't know. I may have to make some adjustments in my uh, my plan. So you have all these buttons on the front. Uh, there is what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of them. Um, so eleven without the function. This may be another type of function because it looks to me that this is indicating it's a bank selector. So I'm going to guess there's actually ten. These ten right here that you can actually assign to things, and these are simply controllers. On the back. And it's, and it's plenty beefy. We've got connections for power and the power on and off button. Um, I, you can actually expand with this. I don't know if the Ty or Tyros and or Genos will let you do this, but there's a potential here to add four more uh, controller switches here. Uh, not that there's space for them, but hey, options, right? MIDI in and out. Um, I don't know what this is. Uh, it's off, obviously a communication protocol because you can switch between MIDI and whatever WX is. I'll have to hit the manual or maybe just maybe somebody's got a great video online for this. And then normal mix. I don't know what that function does. But as I learn all this and apply it and you actually get it to work well in performance, I'll let you know what I've done and uh, what I think and if I end up having to try something different. But I sure hope this is going to work because, wow, a lot of fantastic possibilities. Imagine, and again, I don't know if this is possible, but imagine if the assignments to these buttons could be stored differently in every registration. You could have things dedicated to these buttons that go with a particular song and the way you want to perform it. Uh, that would be spectacular. I hope that's the case. But even if it isn't, I can pick 10 things that I use all the time uh, that, that will be uh, really nice to have at my left foot. Because this probably will be as far to the left as I can get it. And does it have rubber feet? It has tiny little rubber feet. Ooh, but they're, this is kind of like a bed liner, sandpaper kind of thing. So I don't think it's going to move around too much. That's good. Oh, and there's many of them. So, this won't be the first thing I dive into. I'm just going to have some fun playing for a while. But this is waiting for a further video and more tech integration. So if this is something you think you might like to add to your setup, uh, please let me know in the comments. Let me know if there's something specific you would like to know if it can do, and I will check into it. If you are currently using this with a Yamaha Arranger keyboard, Hit the comments too, tell us what you found out. Uh, let's share if we can and help educate each other uh, because uh, this has a potential, I think, to really up everyone's game uh, and just make playing all that more fun.
So this has one other accessory that I got to go with it. An important one is always with any of your equipment, which is protected on the go. And there's a company, is it SKB? Yeah, it's SKB, that actually makes what, this is a case, and they actually make a case specifically for this controller. It's not a hard shell case, but it's a, what I would call a hardened soft case. And they're really good at this stuff. It's kind of like some of the newer cases that you see being used for horns, saxophones, trumpets, and such, so that they are not crushed, even though it's not technically a hard case. on the demonstrator if you can here without hurting anything but this looks like it's just material but you'd have to drive over that with a car to get it to crush um, or something similar let's look at the inside real quick and I'm still going to have to figure out cases for the keyboard stand or whether I'm going to get a different keyboard stand for when I'm traveling and I'm not sure what to do about the speaker system yet. That's another unknown. Nice pocket here for cables. Well, let's just put this box out of the way, shall we? Oh, nice carry strap. protected nice storage and once again when I'm feeling up to the task I'll be diving into the manual and seeing what this baby can do now I think it's time to maybe put some accessories on the stand and actually set the keyboard up and plug it in okay and here's the result of the accessory mounting here we've got the microphone stand. Here's the laptop stand. It's important to note there's an adjustment here that lets the microphone stand to adjust depth-wise in and out this way. You can adjust with this knob here the height of the pole and then the adjustment in and out and side to side of the microphone boom. I think pretty well thought out. Same thing with the laptop stand. You could mount it angled this direction, you could mount it angled that direction on either right or left. And then you can adjust it in and out, and you can adjust the tilt of the tray, uh, including the width of the stoppers here that keeps your laptop from sliding right off. So overall, I think all very cool. Obviously, this probably won't be where they end up being after we get the keyboard together, uh, but we're probably close. So the next thing to do is put the keyboard on and see if any of this is in the way and move towards first power up. Here it is all done and set up, assembled, ready to be played and performed. Let's take a look at some of the features. The keyboard itself, of course, on that table stand. There is the microphone attachment that was available for the stand. And there is, if I can get it in frame, there is the laptop stand and bracket. Then, of course, we have the subwoofer. And currently three pedals. Until I implement that other MIDI controller, I'll be working with those three. And then something I never talked about that I want to talk about now, because it was the last thing I did, and that's this little device over here by APC. This is called a UPS power supply, which stands for uninterruptible power supply. It does many things. For one, it filters the power coming in before it gets to your instrument. 
And so if there's any problems in the house or problems with the current coming from the power company in your area or the lines or anything that could cause noise and uh, harmful artifacts, it filters them out. It protects against spikes in power, which can easily take out a piece of gear in one moment. It also protects against something else that can be just as devastating to electronics, and that's a brownout, where the power falls below the correct voltage. So it protects against that. And of course, a complete power outage. And the other dangerous aspect of that, which is when the power comes back on after a power outage, which can contain a severe spike. When the power goes out, this unit has a battery in it, and it switches to that immediately so that your attached equipment does not turn off, and you can turn it off as you wish and get ready for when the power comes back on yourself. If you don't happen to be home, this will protect against all of that automatically. It will run on batteries, it will absorb any spikes that come on as the power comes back on, and then it will switch back to wall current when it's safe to do so. So it's constantly protecting your equipment. And there's a link in the chain that a lot of people don't really think about, so I found, that I think is important. It has saved my gear several times throughout the years. Uh, they might seem expensive. A unit like this is probably somewhere around $200 in most markets, uh, maybe higher in uh, Australia in the UK. But worth its weight in gold when you're talking about an instrument that's many thousands of dollars. So this is a place where I always tell people just don't even think about skimping. It will really pay for itself in peace of mind and actual saving of your gear from being destroyed by an electrically related problem. So that's it. All but further playing and getting used to how this thing works. I do have some initial impressions I want to share that don't belong in this video. But there's some things that uh, I've run across already that I was not expecting after just seeing literature and watching videos and other people playing. And I want to pass that on to you, but that will be the next video. Also, let me know what you think, if you have any suggestions in the comments. And let me know what kind of songs or artists or whatever, what would you like to hear uh, as I get deeper into this instrument and start performing on it. See you soon.